Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Rama, and in today's video, we are going to be breaking into the top 10 best weapons that every solo player needs in Grand Theft Auto Online. Weapons are obviously one of the most important purchases you can make in this game. They can drastically change how capable you are as a player, not only dealing with missions, but other players as well who might try to ruin your day. So obviously, make sure to stay tuned. If you enjoy this type of content, you know what to do, and let's get right into it. In the number 10 position, it's pretty self-explanatory. We have the Heavy Sniper Mark II. This is a weapon that a lot of people are most familiar with because of how dangerous it is. Let's say I want to shoot somebody that I don't like all the way down on the road here. How about that motorcyclist? Well, if you aim properly, as you can see, that person is knocked out. Let's say I want to get this person here. Well, I can. I mean, obviously, you have to be a really good shot, and I'm not going to say I'm the best shot with the sniper. It's pretty hard to lead them, especially at this distance, but pretty simple to understand why this is such a good weapon. If you're doing any missions or you're doing any 1v1s where you want to kill somebody across the map, this is obviously the weapon that you should be going to. You can easily eliminate people all the way across wherever you are. In fact, I'm pretty sure that the sniper can go quite a bit out of the render range if you actually aim where the person is properly. So this is just a great weapon in general, and that's why it's making it into the number 10 position. Driving a vehicle is one of the most common occurrences of where you'll need to pull out a weapon in GTA. Whether you're trying to escape the police like I am right now, or there's somebody that's trying to chase you and kill you, having a good weapon inside of your vehicle is very important, and some vehicles don't even support explosives like sticky bombs or grenades. In that case, you never want to pull out a weapon like the Navy Revolver. I mean, pistols are pretty useless for the most part, because you're literally going to have to either headshot the person or just shoot them over and over and over. You don't want that. The AP Pistol, it's a great shout, it's one of my favorite weapons. However, in my opinion, the best weapon to get your hands on is the Micro SMG. And the major reason why is because this is a super fast firing weapon. The fast firing weapons are great because you can headshot anything that you're trying to hit. I mean, you can see how many cops I have just popped with my uh, SMG in the head here. There goes one, there goes another, there goes another, there goes another. It is super easy to headshot with the micro SMG. And it makes completing any missions when you're inside of an armored vehicle way easier, way faster. I would also say any other type of automatic firing weapon is just as good. So the machine pistol, also very solid. The reason I don't like the machine pistol as much is because it doesn't have as good of a rate of fire, which makes it a little bit trickier to hit people in the head. That's why I would either suggest to go for the AP pistol, which has a super fast rate of fire as we can see, or the micro SMG. The reason the micro SMG is a little bit better is because it's quite a bit more accurate. Same thing for the tactical SMG. It holds more ammo, but the micro is still a lot more accurate. You can see just how easy it is to get those headshots. Before we make our way into the number 8 position, I thought I would showcase a little tip that if you didn't know will massively help you. Scrolling in your interaction menu over to health and ammo, clicking on ammo, and scrolling over to all will let you purchase all the missing ammo that you currently don't have in your inventory, which is incredibly nice, especially when you're leveling up and you get increased ammo capacity. It's really nice just to be able to purchase all of that ammo right there, or even when you're low level and you're constantly running out of ammo, you can purchase it while in missions, which is an absolute lifesaver. But that brings us into the number eight position, which is throwables, specifically being the sticky bomb and the proximity mine, which I put into the same category. Sticky bombs are great because let's say there's somebody that you're trying to deal with that you don't like. Well, you put a bomb on their car and you blow them up. It's that simple. If you're in a vehicle that doesn't have missiles, this this is your best resort to blowing up people. Imani tech cars on average can survive four sticky bombs if you're looking at the Dubachi Champion or the Buffalo STX. Now there are certain Imani tech cars like the Obey Ominous EGT, which can survive more, upwards of 10. But for the most part, it is very easy to take out even some of the most armored vehicles if you use sticky bombs as they deal double the damage of your homing launcher. You can also throw sticky bombs incredibly far. Look at how far I'm going to throw that sticky bomb there. It's in the air, in the air, in the air, and now it has finally come down. Look at how far away that is. I mean, we literally blew up that truck. It was almost out of our render range. So the fact that you can throw them that far means that if you actually get really good at using them, you can very easily take out threats behind you, in front of you, easily. But let's say you're not the best with sticky bombs. So that brings us to the second category, still in the number eight position, which are proximity mines. Proximity mines are great because you can throw them ahead of you or behind you, and you can see it there. A car drives over the proximity mine, and boom, it blows up. 
That's what's great about them. They're essentially mines that you can drop out of any weaponized vehicle, except now you can just throw them on the ground. So what you do is you just throw them all behind you and somebody's chasing you and they drive over them, boom, they blow up. Now, if you are driving over about 100 and probably 20-ish miles per hour, the explosion will blow up after you've driven over it, but it's just great to throw down like five proximity mines while you're driving down the highway. And if somebody's trying to kill you or chase you, you just spam these down the road. And as you can see, they cause absolute havoc and mayhem. And you can obviously keep purchasing them through the interaction menu, which makes them really, really good to use. In the number seven position, we have a weapon that a lot of you might be asking, why the heck would I pick it? It's the flare gun. And you might be saying, like, why the heck would I use a flare gun? What am I going to do to people? Oh, no, I'm going to get you. Oh, darn, I did it. Well, there's one major reason why the flare gun is in today's video, and that is because of the fact it acts as a homing missile jammer. For example, let's say there's an Oppressor Mark II or a Deluxo that's about to shoot a missile at me, and I either see the missile coming in or I hear it. Well, all I need to do is point my flare gun up, shoot it into the sky, and that missile will be instantly distracted and fly to the flares. If you have two people in your car, or it's just you, you can literally spam these flares over and over and over. You can see you can shoot them pretty fast, and every single time you shoot a flare, a missile will go after it, which will absolutely save you sometimes. It's definitely one of the more useful things to know in GTA, and it's one of my favorite ways of distracting people. If I'm ever doing a sail mission and I don't have somebody to help me or, you know, I'm solo, I see an oppressor that's about to shoot missiles at me, I pull out the flare gun, I start shooting it in the air and it usually distracts the missiles. And obviously, if you distract enough when the oppressor's running out, you can just go to health and ammo, you can purchase more flares and do it all again. It's honestly crazy how you can dodge missiles with a flare gun. In the number six position, we have a weapon that some of you might think as a meme, but not actually for its useful capabilities, and that is the Up Anatomizer. If we make our way over to the weapon's choice, we will see it right here. And this weapon's kind of weird, because it shoots this little plasma beam, and it doesn't really do much damage, but what it does is a lot of knockback. As we can see, it will absolutely send cars flying. If you hit them on the side, it'll actually flip them upside down, which is pretty dang funny. Now, this weapon is great for two reasons. First of all, it's incredibly useful. Let's say that your car gets stuck in a spot where you can't get it out. Or let's say you're doing a mission. How many times have you done a heist like the Pacific Standard or something, and the boat gets launched onto the rocks or gets stuck in an area where you're like, uh-oh, I can't get it out. I just got it stuck. Are we going to fail the mission? Well, the great thing about the Up Anatomizer is you can just pull it out, shoot whatever it is that's stuck, and it will usually lodge it out of the location that it's in. That alone makes it incredibly useful and is one of the major reasons why I recommend solo players carry it. The other reason the Up Anatomizer is amazing is because it deals with Oppressor Mark IIs like crazy. It has no ammo, so you never need to worry about reloading it. And if you hit an Oppressor Mark II player flying, it will instantly knock them off of their oppressor, usually send them flying to the ground and they die. It's so fun to do, and if you are a pretty good shot, it is definitely one of the more useful weapons you can use in the game. We now break into the top five weapons, and in the number five position, we have this big ol' hongler bongler, the minigun. In front of us, we have a Buffalo STX. This is by far one of the best Amani Tech vehicles in the game, and I don't think many people are going to disagree with that. Let's say that you're trying to take out this car, and you pull out a normal weapon and you shoot the glass. Well, as we can see, the glass on the Buffalo STX can survive quite a bit of rounds before it actually gets broken through. And some of you might say, well, that's all right. I'll pull out my armor piercing rounds and I'll cut right through the glass, which is possible. However, I personally hate armor piercing weapons because of the fact that you have to constantly go over to your Mark II workshop to buy more ammo for them when you could just pull out the minigun. And as we can see, the minigun shoots 50 caliber bullets, which turns any armored glass literally into toothpaste. No issue whatsoever. And because of that, the minigun is kind of just better than any armor piercing weapon in the game. Plus, the minigun does insane amounts of damage. We got a car here and not for long, as we can see, the car is already on fire and it's gone. I mean, 
Yeah, the minigun is not a weapon to be messed with. It can kill a player in about 0.2 seconds of shooting. If you just hit a body shot, it basically kills them instantly. It's very hard to miss because surprisingly, it's very accurate as we can see. So yeah, the minigun is just not a weapon to mess with. And even though a lot of people look at it as kind of like a cheating way of killing people, hey, if it gets the job done, what's the problem with it? I'm gonna use it every day of the week. I don't care if the tryhard gets mad at me. If I'm winning, I don't care. Earlier in this list, we talked about the Sniper Mark II, which is an incredibly useful tool if you want to kill people at distance. But the Sniper gets even better if you change the magazine that it features. See, right now we have the basic clip, which is all right. It one-shots any person with a body shot not running armor. However, you can make it quite a bit better if you scroll over to Explosive Rounds. We can see it features a yellow magazine. Now, this isn't cheap. You have to purchase some sort of Mark II workshop, and then you also have to unlock the Explosive Rounds with your bunker research, and then you have to upgrade the Sniper, and then you have to purchase the rounds. It's probably going to cost you close to $2 million to get the Sniper Mark II with the explosive rounds in your inventory. In my opinion, it is well worth the cost to get your hands on the explosive sniper. And the reason why is quite simple. Let's say I want to blow up this car over here. Well, that takes about one second. There you go, it's gone. Want to get rid of this car? Gone. Want to get rid of this car? Gone. It's a little stupid how dangerous the sniper is. The only problem is you only carry 40 rounds of ammo. And to reload it, you can't just go into your interaction menu. You can see if we go to health and ammo, and we go to ammo, I already own all the ammo I can get. The only way to refill weapons like this is making your way inside of your armory, purchasing more rounds. And these rounds are expensive as well, so keep that in mind. But it's definitely worth it. Because if you want to kill somebody, you easily can at any distance. If you see an oppressor trying to fly at you, boom, knock him out of the sky. Any vehicle that has the full armor upgrade on it, you will have to use two explosive rounds to take out. But I mean, that's so easy. If there's a Deluxo trying to take me out, boom, one, two, it's done. Deluxo's blown up. I mean, that's just how easy it is. If there's a jet like a Raiju trying to take me out, it probably after two or about three of these rounds, it'll start to smoke. And after that, it's just a two minute timer before the thing gets knocked out of the sky. You can keep shooting at it and you'll blow it up quicker. I just think the explosive sniper is such a mandatory weapon nowadays because of how useful it is to take out flying opponents. In the number three position, we arrive to our shotgun pick. Now, there's a lot of really good shotguns in the game. We have the explosive shotgun, which will blow up any vehicle in one single hit. Absolutely amazing. We have the assault shotgun, which has an incredibly fast rate of fire and will easily clear a crowd very, very quickly. However, we are actually not picking the assault shotgun. We are picking the heavy shotgun. Don't get me wrong. I really like the assault shotgun. It holds 32 rounds, shoots incredibly fast, but... You know what? The upgraded heavy shotgun has better range, it has better damage per shot, and it only has two less rounds in the mag. And because of that, I think the heavy shotgun is actually the best room clearing device. So we're going to see just exactly how fast we can clear a room. And there you go. That guy's obviously dead. We've got you already dead. As you can see, it's basically like using the assault shotgun. The only difference is that it has a slightly worse rate of fire and a little bit better accuracy. So it's way easier to hit people in the head with this weapon. So there you go. He's cleared. Oh, well, we're just going to hit that person in the head. You're down. You're down. You're down. So, yeah, I mean, this is super, super useful, as we can see. So I really like the heavy shotgun. Now, to be fair, as I said, the assault shotgun basically the same thing. Both of these weapons are great. I just like the heavy shotgun better because it does a little bit more damage, which can make it uh, more useful in certain situations. In the number two position, we have the Combat MG. It doesn't matter whether you have the Mark II or you have the base MG. This is just an absolutely amazing weapon. It's very accurate. As you can see, it's very easy for me to headshot anything I'm aiming at. Not only does this weapon headshot very easily, but it has an insane amount of ammunition. 200 rounds in the magazine and you don't even really need the headshot to kill people if you body shot it's going to do the majority of the work knock them over just a couple shots to the body and they are going to be completely knocked out because of that i just absolutely love this weapon you can see how easy it is just to mow people down when they try messing with it it's basically no effort whatsoever and that is
that is why the MG makes it into the number two position. There's nothing per se that makes it, you know, have a ridiculous ability. It doesn't have explosions, it doesn't have ridiculously high damage, but what it does have is a lot of ammo, it does really hard hitting shots, and you just keep shooting over and over. And when you add that onto the accuracy, I mean, I could probably do this for days if I wanted to, just keep on killing these people here over and over. It's also really good at blowing up cars. It's kind of like a minigun in that regard. You can see just how quickly we've caused that vehicle to blow up. So I would just say it's a great weapon all around and that's why it goes into the number two position. And in the number one position, we have the Railgun. This is probably my favorite weapon in all of GTA. I had waited so many years for Rockstar to put it into the game, and the wait was definitely worth it. It's essentially a homing launcher, or an RPG launcher, but just better. Let's say I want to blow up that car with an RPG. Well, I have to aim on it, and then the missile has to fly, and it has to fly, and it misses by like a quarter mile. However, if I pull out the Railgun and I want to shoot that car, Boom, there you go, I just hit it. Yeah, there is a bit of lead you have to do, but the railgun for the most part is almost an instant hit when you press the fire button. And if you get used to the shell speed of it, you can basically shoot anything out of the sky with no issue whatsoever. If there's a jet trying to kill you or a helicopter, if you're either doing a mission or let's say you're in a public lobby and somebody's in a deluxo, well, guess what? The railgun one shots any car. So because of that, you can literally one-shot a Deluxo in the sky. It's actually easier to take a Deluxo out with a railgun than I would say with homing missiles for the most part. How to get your hands on the railgun is pretty easy. You'll notice that we are running over to the gun van. This will be marked on your map, but only if you're near it. If I was somewhere like over here at the time trial, the gun van would not be marked on my map. So usually what I like to do is I'll get out a helicopter or a jet, I'll fly around, and I'll just see if it pops up on my radar. As we can see, there are a bunch of different weapons you can buy every single week. So I've got the precision rifle I could buy that I don't own. Sure, why not? So there's a lot of different things you can buy. Every now and then the railgun will pop up as a weekly option that you can get. And that is the main way on how you get your hands on the railgun.